Hello everyone, welcome back to the Claire Newberry Knitting School. Um, today I'm just going to do a quick, very quick, um, demo on the Intarsia on the 230, okay? So this is a chunky, bulky weight machine. Um, it's quite a simple machine. Um, it doesn't have an automatic patterning facility, but it does have a built-in Intarsia facility on the carriage. It's not a separate carriage where you have to do um, have to uh, take the separate carriage across to perform in Tarsia. Um, so this one is already built in, so that's that's quite handy. Okay, so that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, I've threaded up and I've cast on, what have I cast on here? I've got uh, about 20, uh, 26 needles cast on um, in the centre of the knitting machine and I'm just about to start uh, my Intarsia. So I'm going to point you down to the camera now. Okay, so just move you round and down a little bit. Hopefully you can see what I'm working on there. So I've just cast on with this pink yarn. I'm not worrying too much about the uh, stitch quality. I've left it quite a big stitch size so you can hopefully see the needles and see the stitches there. Okay, so um, what we need with Intarsia, we have to have the yarns on the floor. And for each area of colour, you have to have a separate ball of yarn to feed that area of colour that you're going to, to knit. Okay, So even if you've got the background pink here and then you've got a tree and then the pink background on the other side of the tree or whatever it is that you're making your intarsia, um, you still need a separate ball of yarn even though it's the same colour. Okay, so however um, many uh, yarns that you need on the floor, um, you know, and bring them in and out of work as needed, as uh, depending on what uh, design that you're doing. Okay, I'm doing a really, really simple pattern of just three squares. So I'm going to go pink, blue, pink. Okay, um, but obviously you can get a lot more intricate than that. And I just want to show you the, the technique of um, intarsia itself. Um, and then when, you're, when you've had a little go at that, what you can do is make um, a, a big design onto graph paper, preferably stitch related graph paper. Um, and then you can uh, plot the design on there. And each square of the graph paper is going to be one stitch of your knitting. OK, and you can do it row by row. OK, so I don't need a graph for this. It's just going to be a simple um, design. So as I say, I've done some knitting. I've got um, my carriage on the right here. I'm just going to take the yarn out of there because we're going to not use that, but I am going to use the cone of yarn that I was knitting with, and I'm going to pop that down on the floor because that's going to be one of my pinks. Okay, so I've got a blue down here already, a dark blue down here. So I'm just preparing the yarns and I just put them on my knee, on my lap here. Um, so just getting the all sort of um, done from the small cones on the floor there. Okay, so they're ready to go. And now I'm going to pop the carriage onto intarsia. So I'm going to push this lever to the left where it says intar, which is short for intarsia. I'm making sure my uh, NH levers are forward. Um, the tension dial, we shouldn't need to alter that at all. We're just um, changing the technique so that te that should be fine. Okay, and just for one row, I'm going to go across without any yarn uh, on the needles or in the carriage itself. Okay, so make sure it's on in tar and then come across. Okay, and hopefully you've seen that the needles are in this further position for this uh, position that's a bit further forward. And when the needle butts are in line with D and there's some little actual grooves on the uh, machine bed itself um, and that's where the needle butt should be there so in that kind of halfway that midway position okay so I'm going to get my yarns uh, ready so I'm going to lay the yarns that's the end of my yarn there I'm going to lay the yarns in the direction that the carriage is going to go in so that's going from left to right OK, so I need to lay my yarns left to right. So I'm just anchoring that around the clamp on the left there. And then I'm going to go to that needle there and take it down between uh, that needle there, which is for this instance, it's between five and four. OK, on the left hand side, but obviously you don't have to do exactly the same. 
and I say this is just for um, a little demo. OK, so I'm getting the next yarn in and I've got that behind the pink here. So here's my pink that I just first laid. Then I've got my blue ready to take up the next needle along. So this needle has pink. The next one along will have blue. OK, and I come along uh, until maybe about five on the other side and take it down between five and six on the right hand side. OK, but I say you could try any combination, any uh, width or uh, design. OK, again, I'm coming in with the pink, which is going to be on the other side, and that's behind the yarns that I've just laid in. Again, anchoring it around the left hand clamp there. And I'm going to place that yarn between five and six on the right hand side and lay that gently over the needles. OK, so make sure the yarn is back against the needle bed. And then with my left hand, I'm just going to hold those needles down. Sorry, that yarn down um, on the needles. And that's my left hand is just uh, with my index finger and middle finger. I'm just sort of holding it, the yarn between those two fingers there. OK, so it's just a gentle sort of pull down and come across nice and gently for the first row. And that looks fine. And then I'm going to come across and lay in exactly the same place where the first row was. This time I'm twisting the yarns around themselves. OK, so the pink goes down, the blue comes up and twists around the pink and you lay that uh, in the same way. And again, the blue is coming across the pink and the pink lays over the needles. OK. So the yarn is twisting around itself at the two junctions, the juxtaposition of those two colours. OK, now it looks like we, you're going to get in a bit of a knot down below, but you won't. It'll undo itself going back in the opposite direction in a moment. So don't don't think you've got to shuffle all of the um, yarns around on the floor to unravel the little sort of twist that you get in the yarns. Don't worry about that. Just carry on holding those needles. Uh, so, keep saying that those uh, uh, yarns down um, so the yarn is on the needles quite firmly and then again come across with your carriage just let the yarn pull through your fingers as you go across let's get rid of that for a moment okay and then going back the other way lay the yarns the pink going to the five again and then between five and the four the blue comes up again I'm twisting the yarn around itself OK, and then back down between five and six on the opposite side. And again, that lays down that blue yarn and the pink comes up around it. OK, so we still have that twist where the two colours can join. OK, and then you'll find that the yarns have unraveled themselves automatically. OK, so you're ready to go again. Coming from uh, left to right this time, hold those yarns down with your left hand between your fingers. Just let it pull through your fingers gently. Uh, don't hold on to it. Just give it. It's like a, you're like acting like a little tension unit with your fingers there. And again, I'm laying the yarn uh, between needle five and six on the right, and the the blue yarn comes up and twists around it. Okay, and then back down between four and five on the left, and again. The yarn will twist around itself. OK, I'm holding those needles between my index finger and um, middle finger again and then come across from right to left nice and gently. Let the yarn pull through your fingers. OK, and hopefully you can start to see a bit of the pattern there. OK, so I'm twisting the yarns around themselves again okay hold on to those make sure the yarns against the needle bed hold on to those yarns just let the yarn full come through your fingers just drag through your fingers you're just acting like a guide really for that yarn so it doesn't come off the needles okay and again twisting the blue and the pink around each other and the blue and the pink around each other on that other side okay Hold the needle, hold, I keep saying that, hold the yarn between your fingers and come across with your carriage. Okay, and then hopefully you can see we've got pink, blue, P, 
pink coming here and there's a nice join here as well okay so i hope you've enjoyed that little demonstration there um, if you want to uh, book a private lesson with myself, um, I do Zoom lessons all over the world. Um, or if you're in the UK, I'm based in Northampton in the middle of England and you can book a private one to one lesson in the studio. You can bring your machine or use one of the studios. We have uh, 20, I think it's 21, 22 machines now. Um, so you can use one of our machines as well. Um, I also do uh, design in it, eight and nine training as well. And um, yeah, it's, it's purely um, uh, devoted to yourself. So it's, uh, it's a bespoke lesson. Uh, so whatever it is that you want to learn. So if it's the intarsia or using the river or using the uh, punch card facility on your machine, um, then you can book a private lesson and we just deal with exactly what you want to do. So the, the emphasis is on what you want to learn. OK. So if you've enjoyed that, please subscribe and um, just give us a little thumbs up as well. Uh, any comments, any suggestions, please put them in the, the box as well. Just uh, write a little comment if you want to as well. That would be great to, to hear your feedback. OK, so have a great day and uh, happy knitting.